is. <laughs> Joachim? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mark, uh, Christian. Thank you very much, uh, Felix, and the organizing committee for the invitation to explain you our simple life. And it's about uh, surgery. That's all you need. And uh, standardized things uh, in simple the surgeries. Yeah. I have no disclosures. Just for the um, people who are not uh, in the country, we are doing here in, in Berlin around 700 open and closed cases. Um, with all the complex neonatal surgery, also including double switch and trunkal turn, with a special focus on valve repair. And we do about uh, 25 uh, AVSDs every year. So what uh, is the aim of the talk? Uh, it's basically to explain you our world from our perspective. So I will focus a little bit on anatomy, and this will be basically already redundant because it has been uh, dis explained several times. But there are some special things that are uh, important for us, and I think it's good if we communicate about this. Uh, repair, simple repair, which uh, has been done in all the different departments, and to bring you right into uh, the operation theater, I also have some movies. So, if you look in a dictionary, uh, simple means easy to understand and easy to deal with. Well, this is something very special with AVSDs um, and means for us, anatomy is easy to understand and repairs follow simple standardized protocol. Uh, and I'm going to elaborate this. Uh, when I uh, was in, uh, in 2000, now it's more than 15 years ago, uh, in, in the Royal Melbourne uh, Hospital, Christian told me, listen, Joe, Yves Lecomte told me, AVSDs are all different, and surgical result is random. <laughs> and I didn't explain, and I didn't understand what he's meaning, because I was thinking, thinking, well, it can't be so complicated then. I was watching him operating over 10 hours with bare foot on just a mat. Do you still do that? <laughs> so I think maybe this guy has something to tell me. <laughs> but overall, um, it's a HD, I was thinking, it's a VSD, there's a common AV valve. So the Berlin way to uh, understand it uh, is keep it simple. So there's a VSD to close there's a cleft to close. And, of course, we should uh, close the ASD as well. Well, maybe it's a little more sophisticated, so it's worth to, to look at, uh, at the superior bridge, bridging leaflet. And one who has been doing this very carefully in the early 60s, 70s, was uh, Giancarlo Rastelli, who we only find very young pictures. And I was wondering why. And the reason is he died very young, being 36. But before that, uh, when he was uh, turning uh, to, to work with uh, uh, Kirkland and Magoon at the Mayo Clinic, he invented special things, not only the uh, classification of, uh, of AVSD, but also giving the first uh, idea of how to correct the TGAVSD and truncus using uh, uh, conduits. So it's, it's really fascinating. Uh, and what he's doing and explaining has been already uh, explained uh, a couple of times, so, so I, I generally think for us it's important that there's a VSD and they're bridging leaflets. We can call it left uh, superior or the right superior bridging leaflets. It's a bridging leaflet over a VSD. This is important. Um, the original uh, nomenclature is uh, with a superior bridging leaflet in type A being divided and there's uh, somehow um, connections to the crest of the VSD, which makes uh, uh, repair rather simple using a, just a simple, uh, single tech patch technique. If you look at the, uh, the others, type B with a uh, freely floating, it's much more difficult without dividing this, um, this um, uh, superior bridging leaflet to um, 
to correct it, or you have to tether it down, or you have to cut uh, the, the leaflet. That's uh, similar in type C. So if you look closely, um, you find a lot more uh, variations. Say we, we often see three papillary muscles on the left side, or just a single papillary muscle. And uh, Dr. Del Nido was, uh, was uh, explaining and showing us a, 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 a example of, of a Schoen's complex or, or more or less um, um, a parachute valve. But there's also uh, bipartite uh, inferior bridging leaflets or tripartite uh, inferior bridging leaflets which you see. And sometimes we see holes or, or, uh, in, into the mitral or in the, in the uh, tricuspid side. So there's a whole variety of, uh, uh, of uh, different types which are not explained by these 30 specimens he was seeing with uh, about 80% uh, being type A. But still, I think it's worth uh, to have a close look at the superior bridging leaflet, because uh, below that bridging leaflet, there is the, the root of the aortic. Um, and uh, if you close that, it's difficult sometimes to go between the, the chordae and not obstructing an, uh, the LVOT. Um, so it's always uh, not so easy in uh, TED canals, and uh, Christian will uh, talk about this later. It's even more difficult because the aortic root is shifted somewhat, and to close the VSD can be extremely painful. And also to have a look on the inferior bridging leaflet, because, and, and this has been also told about, there's a conduction tissue. And uh, this slide has been already seen. I think what uh, I, it uh, shows is that uh, the, the, the apex of the triangle of cock is basically in nothing. So uh, the AV node must be in shifting somewhere downwards. But actually, what we expect it to be, there is not. It's not close to this coronary sign. It's, it's further down. So it's even worse if there's both atrial and uh, ventricular components. Uh, the distance of, of what we would think that the, coronary, uh, that, that the sinus, uh, that the AV node is, is further distant. It's closer, uh, sorry, it's closer uh, if there's only a ventricular component. So what we generally do is to look at the ventricular crest and then where this ventricular crest uh, of the VSD uh, meets the uh, hinge point of the inferior bridging leaflet. And with that, uh, we have a close idea of where the conduction might be. And then, of course, we have to put some stitches there. Um, but I think uh, Christian is probably right. <laughs> According to my experience now, and now I have some more experience, they are all different. And Rostelli's classification is, is uh, somewhat helpful to be careful, but uh, generally, if uh, you use a two peer patch technique, uh, you can basically uh, correct all of them. But they are not so easy to understand. Uh, my uh, young colleague, Frau Scho, is always telling me uh, it was very difficult to read. And uh, this is basically what we do in, in the uh, operation. We have to think of how these uh, things get together. For you, this raises a question whether surgeons can read, or if they can, do they read? That's when I go to the operation theater and just show you one uh, nice uh, specimen uh, of a AV canal, and it's just looking inside. Here, over down here is the IVC, it will be SVC, here's the interatrial septum, uh, the left AV valve, the right AV valve. So this is the interventricular septum. I get started this, hopefully it will start. And um, what we see is that there's basically an additional opening. It looks like a hole, I said, well, what, what is this? And as uh, Dr. Del Nido already said, is is not uh, cannot hard or hardly be seen uh, before the operation. But if you pull a little bit, you can see the uh, the chordal attachments. And 
what we do with it, we basically do nothing, we just leave it. On the right side, it's not so big problem as on the left side. But then careful inspection of all the, the papillary muscles. In this case, it's, it's a intermediate type or even a, a AVSD, a cleft. It means not always that it's simple to repair. Sometimes it's even more difficult. You can see, we can check for the, for the, whether there's a VSD below the superior bridging leaflet. That's how we do it. It's, it's simple, pretty much uh, looking and looking and uh, understanding. So there's a posterior, bridge, uh, posterior uh, papillary muscle, the anterior bridging muscle, very thick and very short, uh, short cordy. So I was wondering um, whether if I close the cleft, then uh, the uh, valve will get obstructed. And uh, so what we did is what uh, Dr. Lenita already showed, that we uh, cut this papillary muscle all the way down um, to give it a little bit more mobility. So this is one, and now I can show you the other one. A little, little different one. The same. Oh, oh, is that moving? Maybe it's moving. Oh, here, yeah, sorry. Same thing, it looks pretty much the same. There's a left AV valve. Now we can see there's a lot different. And it doesn't look like the nice screams where we see all the bridging leaflets or it's uh, basically, uh, you can only see that if it's inflated. So that's an inferior bridging leaflet, and it's a mural leaflet. Mural leaflet is very important, I will come to that a little later. It's very important, uh, that's uh, of adequate size, and there's uh, ant uh, anterolateral papillary muscle. You can see some attachments, it's this uh, superior bridging leaflet is divided and has attachments to the crest. So I would call it a type A. So this is for anatomy. Now we go back to the moving. So what types of repair do we have? Ah, so the, the standard therapy, it's, uh, I think the most common is uh, the double patch repair, the single patch repair by just using one patch and then the so-called Australian technique, which was not invented, I think, in, in Melbourne, but uh, in Sydney. Um, I will come closer. All the first of everything is, of course, done by Lillehei, who did a direct closure actually uh, in 1955. Uh, not only of the VSD component, but also of the ASD component. These guys had to be really quick. But after the invention of the heart and lung machine, uh, uh, things get more sophisticated, and you see here uh, in 1959, uh, Kirkling and McGoon described the technique with double patch, and if you go, go closer, they also closed the cleft. Uh, afterwards, uh, Ma Maloney uh, went back to a single patch uh, repair, but uh, divided the superior bridging and inferior bridging leaflet to do this. And uh, this uh, to avoid excessive de valve deformity. Yeah, because if you do just a single patch repair, I have the feeling that you always pull down, uh, which is nothing much to do with, uh, with uh, decreasing maybe uh, decreasing the whole valve tissue that you have on the left side, but it's obstructing uh, or can obstruct the left ventricular outflow tract. And then direct uh, closure was revisited uh, and lately by uh, the Australian guys, uh, Ram Nunn and Jan Nicholson, uh, with a follow-up of 24 uh, months, so relative short, but they didn't see any subaortic stenosis. Um, and uh, moderate regurg in, in only 6%. So how we do it? Uh, it's really, and we've seen that before, we uh, really have to have a nice exposure of anatomy, and then we, we find, try to find the middle of the superior inferior bridging leaflets, and uh, try to close the cleft. We usually measure it not bef 
before surgery, but in during the surgery. Mm, maybe we have to learn that, <laughs> I have to admit. Uh, but uh, I think the idea is to, ha to have a good idea of uh, how um, far the distance really is, not to, to make it too wide, then it will be very difficult to get superior inferior bridging leaflet together, not too long, and it will be distracting um, uh, the, the superior inferior bridging leaflet apart from the lateral leaflet. It should be correct. Yeah. Correct is always difficult to find, as you could say. Uh, with respect to, to the left ventricular output tract, uh, I have this little sketch, which has been already shown by Professor Ho. And um, if you think that you put, put a patch here, our idea is then you would not obstruct or further obstruct the, uh, the, the already long outflow tract, longer outflow tract of, of the left ventricle. Thereby, if you would just tack it down, the superior bridge leaflet, the outflow tract could look like this. I think that this, um, this uh, is mainly dependent of how much tissue you have. And if you have a very small VSD, maybe it's okay to, to just close it. But if it's larger than, I would say, three millimeters, I had my uh, worries that uh, you really could obstruct it. So cleft closure uh, is uh, uh, a thing which we would do the next after closing the, the VSD. And this has been done by, uh, um, by uh, Frau Wetter, who is in the auditory uh, with the team of uh, Dr. Urban, who was my uh, teacher after I uh, came from, uh, from Christian. Um, and they looked at it uh, fairly uh, closely and found out that if you don't close the cleft, it's the most common cause of reoperation. So if you leave the chest open after uh, two, three years, 20% uh, will be reoperated. So it's clear. But cleft closure, what is it? This, you can see this, and this has been also demonstrated by Professor Ho already. Cleft closure is not just cl uh, uh, closing a, 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 like a cleft in, into a normal mitral valve. Uh, it's, it's really, um, you have to think about the, the circumference. So if you close the cleft, you basically make the, the four-fifth of the circumference immobile. And uh, the, the part, the most, the, sometimes it's really so, the only part that can move is the mural leaflet. So what you came to come to is uh, really this situation, that you have a lateral leaflet and that is only uh, uh, opening and closing and the other parts are just simply not moving or not moving much. This is completely different to a normal uh, mitral valve. ASD closure, of course, you have to, to, uh, to look at that as, uh, with special respect to, uh, to the uh, conduction tissue as well. I would like to show you now the, the total repair of uh, that in a, in a movie. So again, um, there's a AVSD, complete AVSD with a large VSD. First, have a look at the posterior anterior leaf, uh, papillary muscles. It's very important. You can here see it's uh, superior bridging leaflet is not divided, but has some attachments to the septal crest. So I'm not sure whether it's a type C or type A. Um, but it doesn't matter. The other thing that we look, always look is the aorta, which is al always very small and distant because it's not wedged. Uh, now, this is the idea of where the middle is. Uh, if you rinse in, uh, we use cardiobleachic solution, and then we find the middle point. And this sometimes takes some time. This is very important. It's critical, this, this stitch. Um, if you do that wrong, uh, you either make the left or the right AV valve uh, too small. So it should be in the middle, sometimes really size that. And now you can clearly see uh, the inferior part of the uh, VSD and the conduction tissue, which mainly may run there. You can see it's not easy accessible. Uh, there's, uh, often there's a lot of uh, cordy, 
which obstruct uh, your, your direct vision. And sometimes um, I have to divide it uh, to, to, uh, to get a good view. Because you shouldn't be staying uh, on, the, on the crest or on the left side because the conduction tissue is right uh, running there. And I like to, to use uh, interrupted sutures rather than running sutures, but this is also a matter of taste, <coughs> I think. And after putting all the, uh, pull, uh, putting all the sutures, uh, we, we measured that by simply a, a strip. And, um, and uh, I feel very comfortable. We have no problems with of the patch being too long or too short. Uh, ideally, it should be a figure a of eight, but I, th I generally don't have the idea that it plays a big role, actually, whether it's a little bit too long or too short. Uh, as long as uh, you, in the middle you, you find the cleft and the cleft is, is ordinarily uh, fits together. So you can see that how you place the sutures just through the bridging leaflet. And again, you have to look that uh, you find the right place. And it's sometimes not so easy because uh, the more places, uh, sutures you, you, you place, the, the harder it gets to get uh, vision. But it's critical. It's very critical, especially in the inferior part, to put the sutures nice. And then the, the uh, VSD patch is, is uh, approximated and tied down. Uh, and then you start um, and rinsing or inflating the left side again and have a look at the uh, the cleft, which is usually the valve is always incompetent after after you you put the uh, the, the VST patch, and sometimes it's very nice um, to ha you have a very nice co-optation surface, and so it's very easy to place the stitches. But sometimes it's just not nice, and uh, you, you have a hard time uh, finding the the, the co-optation. Uh, surface. It shouldn't be uh, adapted like this, it should be adapted like this. But sometimes it's, uh, if you have little tissue, and this is some, the feeling is that you find that more often in non-down patients, uh, then it's very difficult. And sometimes if the mural leaflet is small, it's very hard to close the VSD, uh, the, the, uh, hard to close the cleft totally, so you, sometimes you have to leave it open. Now this is usually the, the size of the, n the normal mitral valve and um, now you can see the, the, the comp competence is rather good. Uh, we test uh, the left, the, the right side as well, you can see uh, there's, uh, there's regurgitation. So we have to f uh, f put some stitches over there as well. It's just like closing the cleft on the right hand side. A little bit further, so that's done. <laughs> and uh, now the competence is much better. And the last thing is then to um, to fix the, the ASD, and you can see here, you are very careful to stay very close to the, well, the mitral annulus, and not to come too close to the AV node, which somewhere is there, we know that, and we always worry about it. So the idea is to go very, just at the hinge point of the inferior bridging leaflet to the, to the left, until we reach, you can see that over here, uh, the limbus of uh, of the f of the um, the posterior limbus of the ASD one. Can I breathe that a little bit? And uh, then we, of course, do the other part. It's very important that uh, this patch is not too small. I had one case that uh, I was a little bit too aggressive in cutting this, and then uh, the whole. Um, the whole crooks was lifted up, but there was incompetence, so I had to redo it. 
and the uh, result is uh, with only a mild incompetence. So, back to the talk. I have a little time, a little more time, because one one uh, guy, Martin Costolnis, cannot come. come. I, I knew that. <laughs> so, simple repair outcome. Um, there's uh, seven American, uh, uh, North American uh, institutes uh, which are uh, in this study mentioned by us uh, in 2011, including Boston and Phila, so it's important, uh, important um, units. Uh, 120 patients, median age was, was about uh, four months. Uh, the majority were down patients. Uh, with single or double or direct closure, and 90% have clutch, cleft closures, and there were no differences uh, with respect to residual defects or uh, degree of um, a left AV valve regurgitation. Also, uh, hospital mortality uh, of 2.5%, overall 4%, and hospital stay was ex uh, extremely longer if you do the a uh, AVSD before, correction before the uh, the date of 2.5 months. I think this three months this is what we think is um, it's usual. And this is a predictor of uh, larger than um, moderate or a, um, degree of uh, AV where free regurgitation was seen in 22%. And the only predictor was early uh, valve incompetence. So um, what did we do in, in Berlin? Uh, Anastasia Schleiger and together with, Ma, uh, with um, Stanislav Wurzki had a, a couple of uh, weeks, heavy weeks, to pull all these uh, this, uh, sheets and uh, charts together and they did a fantastic work and it's, it's 550 uh, patients 60% down, which were mainly operated by Professor Alexi, Professor Hetz, and Michael Hübler, and the last uh, four years uh, also uh, by me and Frau Scho. Uh, and you can see that the, the, there's only very little uh, partial AVSTs for 6%, and the majority is intermediate type or uh, complete AVSTs. And uh, I think the, most of the partial AVSD were were uh, fixed by, by uh, pa one patch repair, all the others were two patch repairs, and of course, cleft closure. And it's a complex surgery, so it's, it's about 90 minutes clamp time, that's, that's the usual clamp time, so two patch repair takes a little time. Uh, an ICU stay is uh, one week, and total hospital stay uh, 19 weeks. If you look at the survival, there's no difference, and this uh, is uh, according to the literature that's have already been published, between uh, downs or non-downs with 80% uh, survival um, in, uh, in 20 years. Surgical error plays uh, uh, a role, yeah, so uh, there is a, a mortality of 10% uh, in the early years from 2000, only 4%, and now there's basically no uh, uh, no uh, losses and uh, no, no losses in uh, in terms of uh, survival. I account this uh, to the, uh, to the uh, increase of uh, of institutional experience because the surgery basically hasn't changed. We still do the the same two patch repair. The freedom of reoperation re also 70% after 20 years, which is, I think, okay, uh, with a mitral valve repair or replacement as the commonest cause for reoperation. But also tricuspid valve repair, uh, but very little uh, left ventricular output duct obstruction. So I come to my conclusions, which is that we, since 30 years, <laughs> have no change in timing, it's about five uh, months and five kilograms. Uh, we do operation earlier if the patient is not gaining weight. Uh, we wouldn't uh, do a, um, a PA band except for, for multiple VSDs or 
uh, for for single ventricle repair, of course. We, we pledged for uh, or vote for a very careful inspection of the anatomy. Um, it's not so important what Rostelli type it will be, but uh, you have to know what what uh, you, you you find and then do uh, the repair. And we vote for two patch repair because I think uh, it's applicable to all the different types and of course cleft closures. Uh, with uh, AVSD repair we have a very low mortality and good midterm outcome. And long term durability I really think is, is mainly dependent on the quality of left AV valve repair. And replacement uh, should be always uh, or only um, um, done with failed um, uh, repair because they have an inferior, infants, uh, uh, inferior outcome, especially in infants. So there's, for me, no such thing like a simple AV valve repair. Uh, and de Gaulle uh, said this uh, very clearly and, <laughs> and, um, and for me, uh, as, as a conclusion, it's very simple to be happy, but in AVSD, it's very difficult to be simple. I would like to thank all the, the team members who made this uh, fantastic result possible, especially uh, Peter Moruin, who did all the, the uh, editing and, uh, and cutting of the movies, interoperative movies, a very nice uh, thing. And, uh, for, and uh, Stanislav Wudski for, for his guidance in interoperative viewing and interpreting the positive result, which is also very difficult, I think and all the other teams who, who make uh, their special thing, their special, uh, keep all their, their power to, to make these things possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.